In the early days of the the goth movement, this this was huge. Yeah, it it, it really touched on it, man. Between that and the Cure and the Sandman, it was all coming together. Oh yeah. And when somebody, and I'm not making a joke here, I'm just saying, when somebody dies on a set in a movie, and the movie ends up having this huge following, probably because of the, of the lore behind it, that's a hard act to follow within itself right there. Mm -hmm. I cannot in good conscience talk about Double Toasted Live in LA without showing that image right there. Double oh, there Toasted Live in LA. So a Crow movie has been in the works for years since the uh, uh, original. And we've had other Crow offshoots after the first one. You know, we've had some straight to, to home video movies. Uh, there was a TV show mm -hmm. oh, at yeah. one time. But the last attempt at a theatrical version of the crow was a huge bomb. Oh. Oh, now they get pop. They uh, that was the crow two city of angels. Uh, they you know I mean they tried to replicate it so much that they picked a dude that looked like Brandon Lee. Yeah, he does look like Brandon Lee. Who is that? Oh, he's a French actor. Do you know? I thought it was the kid from uh, the. The Terminator movies. No, I no, no. That was another one. Okay, that was another offshoot. Uh, yeah, no. That, that's a French actor. I forgot. Okay. forgot his name. But yeah, they gave him the jacket and everything. He had the hair. So apparently, the only way you can come back with a crow is if you got long hair. <laughs> you, you're a goth person. You got a leather jacket somewhere in your yeah. closet. Yeah. Uh. So because of that, you know, a lot of people said, "Listen, it's one thing to have these." you know, these TV shows and these straight to DVD <laughs> movies and whatnot. But as far as the theatrical version of something just being, you know, big like it was before, you just ain't gonna top that first crow. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul. The crow could bring that soul back. So everybody knows the story of the crow out there. You know, the movie was, became a huge cult classic. Probably to argue that it could even be more. But uh, a lot of people said, listen, it's just no way you're going to do that. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of history behind this movie. And we'll talk about that in a little bit to where you're just not going to be able to do another theatrical crow. At least not unless you just try to do unless you just have an idea that they're doing something kind of different and something that's going to resonate with these fans. It's not going to piss them off. Well, they they was, hold that movie dearly. Yeah, it was a zeitgeist when this movie came out. I mean, timing was everything. Yep. And, 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 you know, how it inspired so much. Yep. No, you're right. You're right about that. Even uh, Julian was saying, like, you know, this is one of those early movies that a lot of people forget. It's a comic book movie, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it was successful. But here we are. You know, somebody did finally make it happen. Uh, we have a new crow coming out. And the trailer came out. And here we have Bill Skarsgård putting on some different clown makeup now. <laughs> <laughs> what he had to uh, Boy, he stays in the clown white, he, doesn't he? he? He's down the clown all the time. <laughs> uh, so, listen, let's go ahead and watch this trailer. We're going to have a discussion. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of people out there who are hating on this movie before it even came out. And I'm going to tell you right now, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Um I can kind of understand what they're talking about. But let's go ahead and watch this trailer first, and then we'll come back with our discussion on why I think that this movie is just not going to be very successful. And we'll have some other opinions from these guys in here on probably why they disagree or agree. Look at what you've become. You know that love promises only pain. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Post Malone fan? I didn't say I was a Post Malone fan, but I'm going to tell you why that is laughable right there. Now, I'm going to let you know right now that uh, after this trailer premiered, up to this point right now, I think it's received 50,000 dislikes. Oh, wow. And after watching the trailer myself, I got to say I'm not surprised. And now let me make one thing clear. I'm not jumping on a bandwagon right here, and I'm definitely not one to align myself with angry fandom out there. As we all know, fandom is toxic. It can, you know, it gets out of hand. People have judgments, you know, just just based on nostalgia or what they want. 
Oh, you ruining, you know, they, there's a sense of entitlement a lot of times with with uh, with fandom. So I'm not aligning myself with angry fandom, but I, I'll just be. You know, oh, and that's another thing with this. With The Crow, I'm not against a remake. The movie, as popular as it is, it's still a lot different from the comic. Yes, it is. Because I was I, I was already a big fan of the comic before they made the movie. And so to watch what they did, I was like. Well, okay. I mean, it's the story essentially. Yeah. But then, you know, they've movied it up. Yeah. Which, you know, they had to do. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot more that they could tell. Like, if you really, so if they want to go and do a remake where they want to be more like the comic, more true to the comic, because there's some storylines in it that they leave out. There's characters like the Skull Cowboy that they leave out. If you know anything about the the, the, the comic, you know, they could, they could do a version that's probably closer to that. And the fans would probably appreciate that. And then it would be something new that they're doing here. Uh, and who knows? This movie right here, it looks like they're doing some things that are, that are kind of different that we didn't see in the first movie. But, man, The Crow is such... A classic film, you know. Uh, uh, one could argue that the, the Crow is actually a, a a true classic, you know. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. It could be argued that you know it's it's, it's, it's exceeded cult status. That you know, and, and has such a strong following. You know, a lot of that has to do with the uh, you know some of the again the history of this of this movie right here. We all know the story, of Brandon Lee. And how Brandon Lee died making this movie. A piece of shrapnel came out from a gun, shot him. He died, and it took this movie to a whole mythical level. <laughs> a movie with a, about a character that dies. Well, especially considering that the story itself, even the comic book, was inspired by James O'Barr, who's the uh, the writer artist. His girlfriend being killed. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, he fell into a depression and a, a drug problem. And doing the crow, the comic was his therapy to kind of pull himself out of it. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 this this whole story, this whole property has been mired with with tragedy, with death. Yeah. But for the you know, like I said, the the, the mainstream audience out there, this made big news when Brandon Lee died. Mm -hmm. It made big news because first of all, it's the death of a celebrity. His father Bruce Lee died, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know this is a character that dies in the comic. And, you know, this, this, like I said, it just takes this whole thing to a whole new mythical level where, you know, it's, it's solidifying this goth fan base who, let's, let's admit it, they got an obsession with death anyway. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you know? sure. Yeah. And in the early days of the, the goth movement, this this was huge. Yeah. It, it, it really touched on it. Man, between that and the cure and the Sandman, it was all coming together. Oh, yeah. And when somebody and I'm not making a joke here, I'm just saying when somebody dies on a set in a movie. And the movie ends up having this huge following, partly because of the, of the lore behind it. That's a hard act to follow within itself right there. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying if it looks like the slightest thing is subpar with this. It's not going to be successful. And I'm looking at this this movie right here, this remake that they're doing. And I, you know, I don't want to be I, I don't want to be a, a judgment. I want to be biased. I will reserve my judgment for the movie when I see it. And I will happily change my mind if it's a good movie. And I hope I do. I really hope I do. But if I was to be honest, to come to the defense of these fans that are saying that they're, you know, they're giving all these dislikes and, and just not feeling this right here, uh, I can kind of see what they're talking about. I can understand what they're what they're what they're feeling, and so that's why I'm gonna give you some reasons right here why this to me looks like it just cannot live up to the original to the point where I don't know how successful this is going to be. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the flow of the show, but I do have to give a word out to our sponsor right now, and I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this portion of the show and. This is a good chance to talk about therapy. You see, I'm concerned about all of you out there and your well-being. So let's talk about therapy real quick. You know, therapy has this stigma against it where people think it's for very severe mental issues out there, such as severe depression or thoughts of harming yourself. And while it is certainly for those things, therapy can also be used for something as simple as just organizing your mind. Hey, listen, you organize your mind to achieve those goals in life, maybe for your career or certain life goals, relationships. You want to improve those with your friends or your partner. Therapy can certainly be used for that. Think of it this way. You go to the gym to take care of your body. So therapy, consider that as going to the gym to take care of your mental health. And there's no better place to start with therapy than online therapy. And there's no better place to start with online therapy than with BetterHelp.com. Why? Because BetterHelp.com, it's entire. 
Now, here's something that's going to really give you peace of mind right there. Saving money. That you, look, you're feeling better already. How are you going to do that? You're going to use our code right here. Betterhelp.com slash double toasted. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash D-O-U-B-L-E. T-O-A-S-T-E-D, betterhelp.com slash double toasted. You put that in, you save 10% off your first month. Again, 10% off your first month if you put in betterhelp.com slash double toasted. Hey, listen, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there for your constant support. Hey, you give me peace of mind. Love you all. Thank you so much. And now back to the show. I mean, I, I think that it looks kind of interesting. I, I think that, you know, the, the campy style of the original Crow is a really tough act to follow. And when you're remaking it, you should have a different spin on it. So my reaction to this was like, all right, I'm not blown away, but really great actor as the lead. You know, there's opportunity for cool shootouts. They're clearly John Wicking this character, which mm -hmm. is the, the popular thing to do. I don't think Action Art House has, you know, been overdone that much yet. Yeah. But I'm, I'm open to it. I'm, I, I'm not mad at it. Yeah. And I, like I said, I'm not mad at it. I'm not even sitting up here hoping that this does, that, 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 that this fails. I'm just saying, man, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing things that I've seen from other similar movies mm -hmm. that have tried to do a similar thing and they went down... A, this similar path of not getting the success that they thought they would simply because the movie was a remake. And I'm going to start with the, the first one right here. It's about three things that I have to talk about here. It's not, not a lot, but I'm going to say this. Uh, so number one, I don't think that this, this new crow has a, an original look to it. You know, I'm looking at this right now and if you want my opinion of this, this, this is why I'm feeling this way. This, this reminds me of remakes like RoboCop and Total Recall, mm -hmm. you know, where they, they were remaking these films and they, you know, they, they, they're remakes of movies that have huge followings, have left huge impacts. And the remakes just came across as standard Hollywood studio stuff. And that's kind of what this looks like just a little bit. Um, and I think it's part of it because of something that you said. See, the thing with the original Crow is that the original Crow, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, and no offense to the people who like the movie, because actually I'm a fan of the original Crow. I really like that movie a lot, but I never thought I liked it because of the story. <laughs> I think, <laughs> you know, in the movie, I think the story is just pretty straightforward and kind of weak, mm -hmm. but there's so much going on in the original Crow that up, up, uplifts this movie beyond its story. You know, we already talked about Brandon Lee's death and the, and the history behind that, but the production, and the art direction on the on the original Crow was amazing. Alex Proyas, who's uh, who directed this, he gave the movie a really a, a a unique vision, man. Yeah, the goth version of Detroit in this world that became a character in its own. You know, we're talking about the, like the way Gotham City and Batman sure. becomes a character. You know, and this and and really, like I said, man, this it was almost like this didn't even take place on Earth, really. You right. know, it was just right. it was its own world within itself. Um, when you look at this new crow right here, and it's something that 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 you said that I that I agree with. Uh, when I'm watching this, and let me see if I can find a point here. You know, I'm I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, yeah, a lot of this looks like it's just kind of a regular action movie. You know, it does look like John Wick. The the crow was something that looked entirely original to upon it and onto itself. You know, this is already resembling other movies out there. And I think that's why some of these other knockoffs didn't, or these spinoffs or whatever, these sequels and straight to video things didn't work because they didn't have that originality. Sure. Too. They didn't have that look. And that's what this feels like. It feels like those DVD knockoffs of The Crow, you know, are all those DVD, straight to DVD sequels uh, that they tried to do instead Whoa. of looking like the actual spinoff from The Crow. The production looks a lot better than those. Looks like what better, uh, better than those, those sequels? Oh, and oh spin -offs. yeah, no, it no, it does, it does. I mean, it, it doesn't look cheap. I'm just saying that those movies didn't have any real originality to mm -hmm. them. Uh, where the crow, that's one of the things that really stood out. That movie was had has such style that a lot of people fell in love with that. Right. That's one of the things I fell in love with. I could look at this and not even consider this to be taking place within our dimension, our time or whatever. This was a whole other space all its own. So, you know, I think that's one of the things that people are already kind of 
kind of taking a a little uh, uh, taking the complaint about here that you know this just doesn't look as original. Which if you can't really do that, then you're missing the point of what they did with the first crow, which is one of the things that kept this from being made for such a long time. Now here's another thing that that really I think works against this is that this was made in the early '90s, mm -hmm. and this is the time when movies. You know, they promoted soundtracks as much as the film. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this movie had a soundtrack that elevated it to a other level beyond just the story right here. Along with the production and whatnot, uh, that soundtrack, they they were they, they was put together so carefully. I know this because I love that soundtrack to this movie. The you know, for the the soundtrack for this film, what they did was is that they they picked artists carefully to fit the mood and atmosphere of the film. And, and if you listen to that soundtrack from song to song, it actually feels like it's telling the story mm -hmm. of this movie right here. It was one of the better put together soundtracks that were out there. You know, some soundtracks just threw people together. Who's sure. popular right now? Right, right. You know, we just want to sell some shit. Not the, sound, not the, Crow, uh, not the Crow soundtrack. Um, and with a movie that picks songs to carefully tell the story, if you just listen to the music, that music was used well in the film. Uh, one of the most memorable parts of the movie is when Brandon Lee officially becomes the crow and they play that Cure song, Burn. Mm -hmm. I was like, now when I saw the movie, I had the soundtrack before the movie came out. That's how much I like it. And I'm like, damn, they use that song effectively. So slide back down and close your eyes. I can't say I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know those Man. I told him to leave. <laughs> I, I tried to help. <laughs> oh, you! Yeah, yeah, I got, I got lightning. <laughs> you know I'm mad. Yeah, man. Uh, you know to 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 watch that man is like wow. You know that soundtrack. And if you watch the movie, if you listen to the soundtrack, another the soundtrack, they did put the soundtrack in in spots that were very good. Now that was a big thing back in the early '90s. Yep. Now you know. Looking at this, and and I bring this up because knowing how popular that soundtrack is and how that's a big part of this movie, it's a very unfortunate way to end this new trailer right here. I never be alone. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Listen, <laughs> you gonna auto tune that shit? Come on, man. <laughs> you just aged the movie right there. That's true. I actually thought that the, because that song is Post Malone and Ozzy Osbourne. Uh -huh. And I thought that it was used pretty effectively for the trailer. But maybe that's just me. The Crow soundtrack is, you know, for, for, say what you will about the genre. Maybe you don't like rock. Maybe you don't like goth music or dark rock or whatever. But for some reason, somehow, it fit that movie so well, it's timeless. You know, and this shit right here. <laughs> she's, just, she's, just, she's just like, nah, please don't put that in the movie, yo. Maybe it's just in the trailer. Maybe. maybe. It could that be. happens all the time. It does. It does. So, yeah, but it, but being that it is in the trailer, it's not selling it very well. That's how you got some of those 50,000 dislikes right there. And I was, man, I, and, and, you know, some people might be okay with this. I don't be one of those people who, who uh, is complaining about the look. Of the character. <laughs> Wait, you see, we wanted something different. I mean, he cut his hair. <laughs> Man, listen, there's more to that. It because the problem with the character, it looks it looks like they're trying too hard to be edgy. He's got a jacket with a werewolf on it, he got tattoos on his face. Uh and like I said, that mullet, man. Look, he's, it looks like he's going to see Insane Clown Posse more yeah. than Get Revenge. He looks like a juggalo. Some people even said, and I, I wish y'all hadn't got this man riled up. I wish you hadn't. But he, but listen, a lot of people have been making the comparison. <laughs> and, I, and they listen, I can't really argue with you. They, man, they they put that out there and they upset one person. And, and it's because y'all were making those comparisons. For the Florida Drogue GTA 6, GTA, we don't got to talk. Crow, the movie Crow, we gotta talk. Y'all upset the Florida Joker again. <laughs> he was mad at GTA 6, now he's like, hey, I got some other shit I gotta talk about. I, I won't get that money anyway. Crow, I'm coming after you now, pay pay me my money. <laughs> you must be out your goddamn nuggets if you think you'll get away with this. <laughs> Stealing my likeness. <laughs> my man asked him, you, what'd you, what, tell him what you, oh, you trying to get an interview Yeah, I, I saw that guy streaming on TikTok. Uh, TikTok. I was like, hey, do you do interviews? He's like, yeah, I do paid interviews. I can work within your budget. 
Uh, this is right. man, I'm sorry. Ain't nobody paying the floor to joke it or do it to talk, all right? How about a ham and cheese sandwich with two <laughs> pieces of cheese? No, we some potato chips. We might have a deal. <laughs> I need a soda. I gotta wash it all down. <laughs> hey, this fool is not happy, boy. Boy, let y'all make no clown related nothing out there because he's gonna be trying to sue you. At the DMs talking about y'all stole my likeness for your upcoming movie. Oh, I want to be compensated. <laughs> we got to talk. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You tell me that that's not me? That's yes. not you, bro. Tell me, I'm tell, yeah, what more say, I'm telling you right now, to your crazy ass eyes, that is not you. Nope. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 by the way, you stole Heath Ledger's look. Yeah, exactly. So you better be glad he ain't a lot of time about, hey, Florida Joker, we got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk. Tie these people all to my damn talking about you stole my likeness. Chris Manola should tell you. We've got to talk. We have to talk. We must speak. <laughs> Florida Joker, we must talk. It's not me. Nope. I will wait. Okay. You're going to be waiting a long time. Oh, no, man. That, that looks more like a Jared Leto thing. He, <laughs> might, he might be the one to come after him. Yeah. That, no, a lot of people made that comparison, too. That he looked, yeah. A lot of people say he looks like the Florida Joker. They say he looks like a cross between the Florida Joker and Jared Leto's uh, Joker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people that. And, and even, oh, I'm sorry. I meant the Florida Joker looks like Jared Leto's no, Joker. <laughs> well, Jared, people have been comparing. Uh, they, they did. They the, did a mashup of Leto oh and Florida Joker. Said that's what you. That's what your new crow looks like. <laughs> I, I don't see it personally. Yeah, I don't really see that. Yeah, like he does. Like I guess he basic Joker, you know. Yeah. But I, I don't think he looks like the Joker at all. I see Florida Joker in there with that mullet and <laughs> face tattoos a little bit. Not like not enough where he needs to get paid to cut that shit out. Hell no. <laughs> Maybe no. smear some shit on his forehead. Then. Yeah. 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 Uh, that is what I'm talking about. Where. You know, you can't you can't come in looking like a generic action film, even if your production is slick. You can't come in treating this character half ass. Uh, I'm not saying you can't do a Crow remake. I'm not saying that at all. But I think it feels like right now they're missing the mark uh, for me. And well, I just don't think it's going to be that successful. What if I'm just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. What if the goal is not to be the original Crow and please those fans, but to go like different direction, more John Wick, new fans? Like, because John Wick has become yeah. a language, like yeah, you said, yeah. John Wick in it. So they're always trying to do something that if it's not a copy, at least it's familiar. Like people who don't know the original Crow can go like, oh, this looks like a cool action movie like John Wick. I will want to watch this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still don't think it's going to be that successful because, again, it looks like something that they, you know, we've already seen John Wick. You know, we've already seen a lot of these action movies. It might do well, you know, but again, I think what you're going to have here, like I said, Robocop and Total Recall came out and. You know, yeah, those, I, those I, movies didn't even understand what made the, the no, original movies great. They didn't. And I think, but again, they came across like, they didn't come across what made those movies special. And by the way, you know, they again, if they had something that was really going to be uh, inspired over the original, that's cool. But those movies came out, they made a little bit of money, but not enough money to justify it to the studio. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying, I'm not hating on this. I'm just giving you a scenario of what I think will happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this is enough originality. I don't think it has enough of, uh, of the, you know, enough there for, for new people. I don't think it's an, and definitely not enough there for the old people, the old fans that love this. So what I think you're going to end up with, I think I have a movie that's going to come out and just, you know, be out for a little while and then it'll be gone. Yeah, I, th I think so. You heard me say that they could make a remake, they, and they might do this. They'll probably bring in some stories that we, uh, 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 storylines in the comic book that weren't in the original. Uh, I know that the, like the female, the girlfriend is getting more uh, attention. She's got a bigger role here. Uh, you know, in the beginning, she was just a flashback. Mm -hmm. uh, here, you know, she's got a whole storyline of what got her in trouble. And But it could also be argued that that, again, that's what made the original great is because the Crow's past was mysterious. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't give a whole, sometimes telling too much kind of takes away from it things. It does. Yeah, yeah. Crow's mystery. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Crow's very mysterious. Like, even when you read the book, you, you were like, wait, is he a ghost? Is he mm. immortal? What's, what is he the spirit of vengeance? Yeah, and I, that's what I love about it. I like, they just focused on one thing, his character and the moody world behind him and his mission. Everything was mysterious. And the less asked about that character, the more lore he had. So, you know, I just, again, I'm not hating. I'm just giving you an argument of why I understand what these fans are feeling, because I think some people, have, you know, they say, oh, these fans out here complaining. And I was like, yeah, probably so. But I understand because I've can, seen this kind of stuff before. I can see where they're coming from, where it, the crow does kind of feel like one of those movies like Back to the Future, where it's like, 
why are you trying to remake this? Like that, that is just a constant yeah. uphill battle. But uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out is the guy who's talking to him at the beginning of the trailer. You think that maybe that could be that that cowboy guy? That could be the I, way that they can incorporate that character. That's, yeah, that's a good observation. Yeah, I was wondering if they would, uh, if that's who that character is, and not, you're talking about this this guy. You only really see him from behind. No, you're talking about this this guy right here. The mysterious. He looks like the Dos Equis guy. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friend. <laughs> he's drinking a beer while he's talking to him, advertising Dos Equis. Yeah, you know, I wish they would make him a skeleton because in the original Crow, they actually filmed that. They tried to make it happen. Did they? And they just said it just wasn't working, so they yeah. cut it out. So, you know, I don't know why. But this is, again, that's a new element, though. Yeah. But again, we have a movie that's not trying to be the same as Martin said. Uh, regardless of my opinions, they could be doing something with this film that is uh, that is different enough to separate it as its own thing. I, I hope it does. I, 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 honestly, I doubt that. <laughs> but, I, but I'm saying it's possible. Well, you know, I doubt it too. But yeah. I, I'm not a hater. I hope that it. I hope. That, I wish it all the success in the world. I don't see it. But hey. Whatever well, happens with it happens with it. I mean, I think to you know to, to to think you might catch lightning in a bottle again is foolish. You just like oh, you have yeah. to just know like it's not possible to do that. And considering that the the sequel, The Crow Two, is so bad, then you know this could only be a step a up. step up. Yeah. Well, they already did a step up. Those home DVD versions uh -huh. were better okay. than that movie. Because I remember I was waiting. I love The Crow so much. I was waiting on that second movie to come out. I was like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was hurt. I was like, "Wow, y'all, y'all, y'all really didn't try to expand, explain." It. Okay, whatever. And this Crow remake has been in production hell for a long time. Yeah. Like, you remember, like five, six, seven years ago, they were talking about Bradley Cooper's casted as a Crow. Bradley Cooper, and then who's the Winter Soldier? Uh, uh, uh Sebastian Stan. I think they talked about was hey y'all were they talking about Sebastian Stan? I thought so. Being in it, yeah, I think that. I think it's they talked bad. to him. No, it's not a bad. Uh, not not a bad choice at all, but uh, didn't happen. So, so Skarsgård's uh, a good actor. I, I'm curious. I think that he'll be able to bring something to the table with this, but I don't know if it'll be enough. Yeah, no, he's he's a great actor. There's nothing against him. Nothing against anybody in this. I'm just saying, uh, just you lo big big shoes to fill. And whether we want to stand on his own or not, and appeal to the mainstream, it does have the original looming over it the whole time. It and does. I, I, I wish it was more artsy. I, you know, yeah, I just wish it had more of an original look to mm -hmm. it. And I really do. But hey, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. From the trailer, I'm hoping that like his bullet holes don't fill in. So by the end, he just has like holes in them. I thought that would look really funny. <laughs> you know, it's, there's something that was making me laugh watching this. It's like when he was like, oh, I can be shot and not die. So he's just letting them shoot. But he's like, shit, this still hurts. Yeah, so. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. God damn, god damn, god damn, god damn, god damn. <laughs> okay, stop shooting me, please. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like what we do. So if you do, check out these other videos just like this one. Check out our other YouTube channels and subscribe to join our wonderful Toasty community. And as always, stay toasty.